Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Cardiac College Learn Online session. Today's session has been pre recorded. It will last about 25 minutes. And at the um, end of that time, then the dietitians will be joining us for a live question and answer period. If at any time you have questions during the session, you can type them into the QA button. Um, type, push the QA button and type your questions in there, and the dietitians will get to them at the end of the session. I hope you enjoy. Today, uh, we're focusing on eating well to manage your blood sugar. My name is Veronica and I'm a dietitian. I'm co-presenting today with my registered dietitian colleague, Fatim, that I work with at the Toronto Rehab Cardiac Rehab Program. The ground rules they include that this session is for education only. And at the bottom of our screen, um, there's the little box that says Q&A. We encourage you to use this icon to write questions as we go throughout today's session. Um, just remember that these questions um, should be general because we can't answer specific questions at this time. If you have something very specific you wanna ask, uh, we just encourage you to follow up with your registered dietitian or healthcare professional. So today's session, as we mentioned, or as I mentioned, is about managing our blood sugar. About 50% of individuals living with heart disease are also living with diabetes. So that's what we plan to discuss today. What uh, will hopefully will help you understand what foods raise your blood sugar. We'll discuss how often you should eat, um, as well as learning how to plan meals to manage your blood sugar. So let's start uh, by talking about why nutrition is important. The past few months, Fatim and I have been discussing how healthy eating can lower our LDL cholesterol or our black our bad cholesterol, also known as lousy cholesterol, um, how it can manage our blood pressure. But today we plan to discuss how it can lower our A1C or manage our blood sugar. So A1C stands for um, a three month average uh, or three month blood sugar average. And this is something that you can get measured when you go get your lab work done. And healthy eating actually can lower our A1C number by 1% to 2%, which is pretty significant. This lowering effect is as much, uh, and actually sometimes more than some of the diabetes medications that are on the market. So healthy eating is really effective to manage uh, our blood sugar. Today when we are going to be speaking about healthy eating for our blood sugar, we are going to consider three different questions. We want to uh, discuss what we eat, when we eat, and how much we eat, because all three of these things matter. And um, that's why these three questions are, are the outline for today's session. The, we will discuss the right type of food to answer the what, uh, we'll discuss the right time to answer the when, and we'll discuss the right amount of food to the to answer the how much should we eat. We talk about uh, foods. It helps if we could classify them into um, the three different macronutrients that are in our food system. So one of the macronutrients is called carbohydrate. Another one's called protein. And then there's a, another one called fat. So carbohydrates are actually our body's main source of energy. Uh, it acts like gasoline in a car. So these carbohydrates turn into sugar when they're digested, and then they go into our bloodstream and our working muscles and our brain then use this sugar to help them work. We cannot live without sugar in our blood. So these carbohydrates, um, as mentioned here, are our main source of energy. Protein is the next macronutrient, and that one helps us build and repair our muscles. Um, as well as our body after damage or stress. So this is also important after exercise. We need protein to help rebuild those muscles. And fat helps us absorb fat soluble vitamins. It also can help support cell growth and produce hormones. So what do you think when we think about macronutrients? What one of the three that are listed here, carbohydrate, protein, or fat, do you think raises our blood sugar? carbohydrates that are the ones that um, are going to increase our blood sugar. 
So just in summary, all foods that we eat are made up of these three nutrients, carbohydrate, protein, and fat. And we need a mix of these um, at each meal to help our body function. And so we'll be discussing um, these three macronutrients in detail and, and what foods, um, what they look like in the foods that we eat. So let's start with that, Car carbohydrates. If you're living with diabetes, this is the macronutrient. You do want to watch um, just the type of carbohydrate that you're eating and the amount of carbohydrate that you're eating, as well as how much or how often. So remember the, the what and when and how much. As I said before, we want our blood sugar to, our blood to have sugar in it because it helps to feed our brain and muscles. So we expect our blood sugar to go up and down throughout the day. Um, and that's, and, and that happens to everybody's body, whether you're living with diabetes or not. So that's what we want to try to do with the food that we eat. We want to eat some of these carbohydrates at each of our meals, um, not too much, but just enough to make our blood sugar go up to help those muscles and our brain function. So when we look at what foods have carbohydrates, that um, when the foods that I guess are listed on the screen are the ones that have carbohydrates. So all fruit have carbohydrate and some starchy vegetables also contain carbohydrates. So those things are like corn, yam, potato, squash, plantain, dasheen, and then other vegetables um, are not actually considered carbohydrate because they don't raise our blood sugar. And those vegetables are things like asparagus, broccoli, beets, carrots, cucumber, eggplant. Um, so it's only the starchy vegetables that we consider the ones that have carbohydrate. Um, other foods that have carbohydrate are our grains. So those are things like bread, bagels, cereals, pita, quinoa, barley, um, muffins, pasta, uh, as well as our milk and alternatives have carbohydrate and that would be things like milk, yogurt, our ice cream would fall into here. And interestingly, cheese actually does not have carbohydrate. It has the other two macronutrients. So it has fat and protein in it. So that's the exception there. And then when we think about our meat and alternatives, uh, they actually don't have carbohydrate. But there is an exception, and that is legumes. So legumes are extreme, or I guess legumes are things like lentils, chickpeas, kidney beans. Uh, they're extremely healthy for us, uh, for our hearts. They help with cholesterol, blood pressure. They also help with our blood sugar control because they have um, a really great type of fiber in them. So we do want to include this type of, of meat and alternative, but we just have to make sure that we know that it uh, can increase our blood sugar. And then finally, um, as you mentioned, sugars and sweets also are foods that contain carbohydrates. And those are things like, uh, you know, white sugar, brown sugar, honey, but also things like pop um, or iced tea, uh, juice, fruit drinks, cakes, cookies, those types of things. So the sweets and um, sugar and sweets, I guess, they are the foods that we do want to try to limit because they don't have a lot of nutrients attached to them. So they're what we call empty calories because there's not a lot of vitamins and minerals. So that's something, you know, you can have a little bit of, but we want to watch how much because these are the ones that really increase our blood sugar. Now, before we go to the next slide, which is the protein macronutrient, I just want to emphasize that all of these foods you know, do contain carbohydrates. And it's important to include these foods in our eating pattern because we do want our blood sugar to go up and down throughout the day. A lot of the time um, when I present that these foods have sugar to uh, an audience, they sometimes think that we should be avoiding them. But I want you to know that we want our blood sugar to go up up and down throughout the day. We just want it to not go up too high too quickly. Um, so we want to make sure that we're eating a lot of fiber that goes along with the carbohydrate and that will help to avoid those blood sugar spikes. 
So when we think about fiber, that means, you know, eating the skin of your fruits and vegetables that will help not spike your blood sugar when you're eating those carbohydrate fruits and vegetables. Uh, when you're eating grain products, you want to be choosing whole grain products. So that would be, you know, switching maybe your white rice for your brown rice to offer more fiber. Um, and then, as I mentioned, trying to limit how much sugar and sweets you have because they don't have any fiber in them at all. So they're really going to spike your blood sugar. Great. So next is protein. So what foods have protein? Uh, remember, protein doesn't raise our blood sugar. So it's actually an important macronutrient to eat when you're also eating carbohydrates uh, because this actually helps to stabilize our blood sugar. They help to balance each other out. These uh, protein foods are things like fish, so that could be canned, frozen, or fresh fish, uh, meat, that's you know, our beef, pork, lamb, as well as poultry, so our chicken and turkey. Soy would be things like tofu or tempeh, our eggs, nuts and seeds, as well as their nut butter. So that would be things like peanut butter, almond butter, uh, legumes, cheese, and then finally milk also contains protein. So like I said, you want to pair these protein foods with carbohydrate foods to make balanced snack or meal because it helps to stabilize the blood sugar. Foods listed here, what protein foods are the ones that contain carbohydrate? See, both milk and legume, those are the two uh, foods listed here, the protein foods that we just have to remember also have the carbohydrates in them, so they will increase their blood sugar. So lastly, we'll discuss fat. That's the last macronutrient. What foods have fat? Uh, that would be our oils, our nuts and seeds, uh, fish are a good source of fat, margarine, butter, avocado, as well as animal meat. So they all contain fat. Now, what does everyone think about these foods here? Do any of these fat foods contain carbohydrate? A trick question. Um, none of the fat foods listed here actually uh, increase our, our blood sugars too much. Um, they don't really contain a large amount of carbohydrate foods. So uh, you can keep that in mind. When we are looking at fat though, there are different types of fat in our food system. So we wanna be eating some types more than others. Um, there's a type that's called unsaturated fat, something called saturated fat, and something called trans fat. Unsaturated fats are the healthier types of fats that can um, lower our cholesterol levels. And um, those are things like olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds, um, margarines, as well as fish. So those are the healthier types of fat that we want to include. Um, this is also a nice macronutrient to pair with the carbohydrates because it does, again, help to stabilize the blood sugar. Um, it helps to prevent the spike of the blood sugar. So try to choose those healthier types of fat more often. Saturated fat are usually paired, um, or the usually found in the animal types of fat. So that would be things like butter, um, as well as animal meat. So things like bacon and uh, maybe the skin on your poultry. Those are the ones we don't want to have too much of. And then finally, trans fats are the ones that we want to avoid because those can actually increase our bad cholesterol and lower our good cholesterol. And those are things like baked goods or shortening. So we want to limit those completely. So I hope that answers the question about what we should eat. Um, we want to be eating all three of these macronutrients and we want to be choosing carbohydrates that have more fiber. We want to include proteins, uh, maybe more plant proteins than animal proteins because um, they have more more fiber, and then the fats. We want to be including some of those healthier types of fats that have unsaturated fat, the olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds, and fish more often. So I'm going to pass it on to Fatim here to, to answer the other two questions. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Veronica. So now that we've learned about the different types of macronutrients and what our foods are made of, um, let's talk a little bit about when we should eat. Um, so we learn that when we eat carbohydrates, they cause our blood sugar to go up 
And we need, um, as Veronica said, we need this rice to help transport sh sugars to fuel our brain and our muscles. Uh, between meals, you'll see that our blood sugars go down. And our goal over the course of the day is to have nice gentle curves in our blood sugar. So it will go up and down, but what we want to avoid are sharp spikes and then crashes to our blood sugar. So what this means for most people is that eating every four to six hours or having at least three meals per day um, is a good idea. Um, it's also important to try to have your meals around the same time each day. And we know that eating in this pattern will prevent low blood sugars and also prevent uh, you from getting too hungry uh, between meals. So um, things to think about. Um, if your meals are greater than four to six hours apart, that's where you might need a snack. Um, you know, snacks are optional and they may depend on how hungry you are, uh, what medication you're taking and your exercise level. Before you exercise, um, it's always a good idea to check the time and think about when you last ate. And so if it's been more than four to six hours since your, your last meal, it's a good idea to have a healthy snack. Uh, you might have a piece of fruit or some yogurt. Um, a healthy snack can help prevent a low blood sugar during exercise. And we're gonna come back to these snacks in a minute. So uh, if we talk about now um, meal planning, so how do we know what our meal should look like. Um, this picture shows something that we call the plate method. And the plate method is a really easy way to know how much food and how much carbohydrate to eat at each meal. So if you look at the plate, you'll notice that it's divided into three parts. The first step is to start filling half your plate with different vegetables. Um, you wanna try to pick different colors because the different colors will give you different nutrients and antioxidants. Uh, your vegetables can be fresh or frozen or canned, and they can be eaten raw or cooked, it's up to you. So at least two varieties, lots of color on your plate is always a great idea. The next step is to look at the quarter plate of your starch um, that includes those grains and starches. These are the foods, if you remember, that will raise your blood sugar. So you want to think about the quantity and you also want to look at higher fiber choices. So things like sweet potato, brown rice, whole grain bread or pasta, maybe some quinoa or corn. You might have noticed I said potato and corn there. And these are actually two vegetables that we don't include in that half plate of vegetables, but that we include under the greens and starches because they are very starchy. Um, and then you can also include a glass of milk and a piece of fruit. These foods also contribute to carbohydrates and they can raise your blood sugar, but you might need them just to balance out your meal and uh, just fulfill your hunger. The last step in terms of planning your meal is to fill that last quarter with your protein foods. And these can be things like lean meat, poultry, fish, tofu, those legumes like your beans and lentils. Um, so when you're planning your meal, some things to remember. Um, it's always important um, to try to keep that carbohydrate amount about the same at your main meal. So you wanna try to keep it consistent. Um, this will help to keep those blood sugars at a healthy range. Um, it's also important to include a lot of variety. So eating healthy doesn't have to be boring. Uh, you can add a lot of variety. Um, and that also makes sure that you get the right balance of nutrients. Uh, you might want to think back to foods that we have talked about uh, from that Mediterranean pattern of eating or that DASH pattern of eating. So, you know, including things like lots of whole grains, uh, the fruits and vegetables, the legumes, the fish, um, you know, just to balance out that meal and, and make it a healthy meal. So I'm going to show you a few examples. So here we go uh, with a plate and you'll notice if we start off with the vegetables, we have a combination of both a, a salad as well as some cooked vegetables. And again, you can choose vegetables the way you enjoy them. So it might be a salad, they might be grilled or steamed, a stir fry, uh, part of a soup or a curry, it's completely up to you. But 
In terms of amount, you want to think half my plate is full of those vegetables. Um, you'll notice here there's a quarter plate of protein, so a lean meat or a chicken, and then there's a quarter plate of um, brown rice or quinoa, or just something uh, to fill that starch. Um, another way to sort of measure your portions is to think of your hand. Um, and if you think of your vegetables, you're going to do two handfuls of vegetables. When you think of your protein, uh, maybe take a look at the palm of your hand. And that's roughly about uh, four ounces of protein for most people, and that's what would fill that quarter plate. And then lastly, you know, if you look at sort of a, a cupped hand full of the starchy foods, um, that would be enough to fill that quarter plate. Now, when we're using the plate method, um, it doesn't always have to look exactly um, as this picture shows and divide it into three parts. Um, if we look at our next example, you'll see you can sort of arrange it the way you want and you can mix things up. Um, it's also important, you know, to keep to uh, the foods you enjoy. Um, don't ignore your traditions and, and foods you normally eat. So here, for example, we have some South Asian foods. Um, you'll notice with the vegetables, we have some okra that's been cooked. Um, there's some salad with some tomatoes and cucumbers. Um, with the protein, there's actually some chicken curry there. And then you'll notice with the starch, we have some uh, whole grain uh, chapatis and a little bit of rice. So you can mix things up as long as sort of the proportions are about the same. And then also sometimes you know, we're cooking things like casseroles or mixed dishes. I mentioned soups. Might not look like three separate uh, quantities of different food, but it might all be mixed together. So you'll notice on this plate, um, there's some noodles, but also lots of those colorful vegetables. Um, there's some tofu or chicken on there as well. So although it's mixed up, uh, if you were to separate it out, you're still doing that half a plate of vegetables, a quarter plate of your grains and starches, and a quarter plate of your protein. So you can think about pretty much any type of food you're eating and think of ways to balance it out. So I mentioned a soup. So for example, if you had a vegetable soup and then you added maybe some beans or lentils for the protein, um, maybe there were some noodles in there, you have your three parts. Um, and that could be a complete meal as well. And again, you might round that off with a piece of fruit or a glass of milk or some plain yogurt. And you're balancing out um, those macronutrients, your protein, your carbs, and your, your fats. Okay, so um, I mentioned snacking. So um, sometimes we do need snacks. And I, I think a lot of people will think that maybe snacking is not such a great idea, but I think when you're living with diabetes, it might be necessary, especially if your meals are farther apart. Um, maybe your schedule doesn't allow you to eat uh, meals between four and six hours apart. Um, maybe you're very active, you're doing different exercises. Um, maybe your medication um, is something that, you know, you don't want to experience low blood sugars with. So maybe uh, you can think about some snacks that might be healthy options um, and think back to what Veronica has said about, you know, the proteins and the carbohydrates and the fats. If we look at our snacks, um, a healthy snack um, might include some carbohydrates. So it might come from fruit or it might come from dairy or it might come from your grains. And just to keep you full longer and also keep those blood sugars more stable, as Veronica mentioned, it's a good idea to choose something that's higher in fiber, but also maybe include something that has a little bit of protein to keep you, again, full longer and keep your blood sugar stable. So there are those apples with some nut butter. Uh, you might do some whole grain crackers with cheese or hummus, which is made with those chickpeas. So it does have a little bit of carbohydrate, but it's also very good in terms of the protein and dip some veggies in, you get another boost of fiber. Um, avocado on a piece of toast, a very tasty, it's a healthy fat, and avocados are also full of fiber. So they keep you full and they help stabilize your blood sugar. Um, sometimes it's just as simple as grabbing a handful of nuts or seeds, and you can choose any type you like, uh, whether it's almonds or cashews or pecans, walnuts, um, pick the ones you like. 
a small handful, and then you see that yogurt with some fruit. So when you are choosing things like yogurt, um, just to avoid the extra added sugar, try to pick the plain yogurt and then flavor it up uh, with the natural sugar and the fiber that you're getting from fresh or frozen fruits. So just some ideas there in, in terms of snacking. So I think at this point, we're gonna open it up to the question and answer. So if you do have any questions, um, you can type them into the Q&A box and Veronica and I will do our best to answer them. Okay, I see a, a question in the chat, in the Q&A box. Um, and the question is, um, what food would be the best to avoid? Excellent question. I think it's a question we get often as dietitians. Uh, what food should we, or what food should we never eat? And um, I think all foods can fit. Um, it depends on how often and how much you eat. So um, I don't think we say, you know, you need to stay away from any one particular food, uh, even when you're living with a chronic condition like diabetes. Um, sometimes um, people feel that they need to avoid all, as Veronica mentioned, all sugars and sweets and treats. Um, but you can um, make these uh, a part of a healthy eating plan as long as you watch the quantity and you balance them off. And it's, it's all about moderation uh, with everything. So um, that's where, you know, you can speak to uh, a dietitian and they can give you some, some advice on how often and, and how much of sort of treat foods to include. But I think, you know, following a, a healthy diet plan has to be enjoyable and it also has to be sustainable. So all foods can, can fit in moderation. Awesome, thanks Fatim. And there's another question that came through that says, how do I view this again? So I'm assuming, how do you view this presentation again? And I believe it will be available in the same calendar that you joined from in one to two business days. So you can also view these presentations on our Healthy University YouTube channel as well. So there's two places there to uh, watch the replay. So I hope that helps. Great. And Fatim? There's another question here. Yeah, so just in line with all foods can fit, the question is, can you enjoy a barbecue steak from time to time? Absolutely. Um, you know, even when we think about heart healthy eating or eating well for managing your blood sugars, um, although red meat wouldn't be a big part of what you're doing day to day, you can absolutely enjoy it um, time to time. And um, you know, even if we look at healthy eating patterns like that Mediterranean pattern of eating, um, it still includes meat, just less often. So you know, once a week or less would be absolutely fine. And then you know, also looking at your portion size. So rather than a 12 ounce steak, um, you might pick a, a steak that's closer to four or five ounces and, and enjoy it. Uh, there's a comment, I never know how much vinaigrette dressing to put on a salad. And that's a that's a good, great question as well. Would uh, vinegar and if um, when we're choosing health, the oil, oil or And then once we're using healthy ingredients, like high quality ingredients, uh, usually the rule of thumb is to keep fats to about um, a tablespoon per meal. So you could try that, um, but it's, all, it's also about satiety and how you feel after your meal. So um, you wanna balance a recommended portion with what you think, um, would be great for your um, satiety or, or how full uh, that will make you because fat is filling. So we, def we definitely don't want to restrict, but we want to know have them in a day. So I guess it's, it's a finding a balance that works. Thanks, Fatim. 
some room to play around and experiment to see how much works for you. But um, around that, you know, spoon of fat per meal is, is a good guideline to start with. Thanks, Veronica. So there's another question about pizza and what's a healthy pizza. Um, that's something I enjoy on a regular basis. I think when you're looking at pizza, you want to look at the different components and, and try to make them as healthy as possible. So if we start with the crust, um, you can um, make a, a whole grain crust or even start off and use something like a whole grain flatbread as your base. Um, I know uh, a lot of uh, restaurants as well give you the option of ordering a multi-grain or a, a whole wheat crust. So you can start with that. And then in terms of toppings, uh, you can't go wrong with your veggies. So um, as many different types as you like. Um, and then with, with some of the meats, like the processed meats, like uh, maybe the pepperoni or the ham, uh, that might be something you don't do all the time, but maybe in smaller quantities. And then um, you can't have a good pizza without the cheese. And so with cheese, um, if you look on the label, you'll see the percent milk fat. And if you are using something like a mozzarella cheese on your pizza, you might look at something that's um, a, a lower percent milk fat. So maybe around the 15 to 20% milk fat, um, as opposed to um, something higher, you know, regular hard cheeses can be around 25, 30 or even higher. So maybe look at the light cheese or one that's reduced fat um, and then enjoy it. And uh, in fact, on the Cardiac College website, we have a, an excellent recipe for making your own homemade pizza. So you can always experiment um, and try different types of, of toppings and, and crusts and, and enjoy it. I hope that helped. Well, I guess if there's no other questions, we'll just um, let you know about our next session, which is how your heart works. And that will be this Wednesday, January the 20th at 2 p.m. And you can connect just like you did today for today's session. And I want to thank you all for joining today and asking such great questions. Thanks, everyone.